that's my YouTube channel today. I'm going to be doing like a devotion kind of thing. And like, like, a kind of like a night time routine. So first I'm going to get my remote and turn on some piano music because like I just like to listen to it while I, um, while I like do my devotion. It just, it's really soothing and then yeah, in, in the background is my sister and brother so I try to like cancel them out. Or, like, if I have to cancel something out, then I put a voiceover. So, yeah. Okay, so it's loading, so let's get my devotion. Um, I have this that I do in the morning. So, the thing that I did that night, I go to it and I just read the story and look at the pictures and stuff. So, yeah. So, this video is kind of just journaling. And, yeah, it's super loud. So sorry. That was super duper loud. Okay, I'm just gonna keep my thing on. Because my show on. Because it's like just easier. It'll never be. I can't do that. Always remember that. So, number 17. So, John 1, 17. For the Lord was given through Moses, grace, and truth came through Jesus Christ. So, that just fits, really stuck out for me. So, now I'm just going to read this and... The big, big boat for a big, big flood. Genesis 6 through 9. If you want to, like, here. So, I have this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the New Testament. And I'm pretty sure there's no Genesis. Maybe. Hold on. Let me see. There's no Genesis, but there's Matthew. So, in the Old Testament, if you have the Old Testament... Genesis 6 through 9, if you want to follow along. When God created the world, he had filled it with beautiful and amazing things. Hundreds of years later, the people of the world had forgotten about God. But God was still watching over them. When he looked at the world, the people made him very sad. It seemed to God as if everyone had become bad. Well... Everyone except for a man named Noah. So, talking about Noah. The pages aren't that long, and it says five minute bedtime stories. Sometimes it takes me like 20 minutes. So, I'm just going to find a stopping point. So, this is from page 17 to 34. That's a good 14 more pages. It'll go by fast. I mean, it doesn't need to go by fast. When God looked down at Noah, he was pleased with what he saw. God said, saw that Noah listened to him. He saw that Noah always tried to do what was right. So one day, God spoke to Noah. God said, I'm going to the wash the whole world in the flood, but I want you and your wife to, and your sons to and their wives to be safe. God told Noah to build a big, big boat called an ark 
and he told him exactly how to build it. Make it 450 feet long and 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make lots of room on the three different levels. Build it out of wood, then cover the whole thing inside and out with tar to keep the water out. Noah did everything that God told him to do. Day after night, Noah and his sons worked on the ark. He didn't mind the hard work. Other people thought he was crazy for building such a big boat. Noah didn't care what everyone thought. Noah knew that God had told him to build an ark. So that's exactly what Noah was doing. God had also told Noah, when you get into the ark, take with you a pair of all the living creatures, animals, and birds, and even the creatures that crawl on the ground. They will come to you so you, that you can keep them alive. And be sure to take lots of different kinds of plant and, and food, enough for you and the animals to eat. Noah did everything that God told him to do. As the ark took shape, animals of every kind, the way to Noah, cows, camels, Doves, ducks, snakes, and snakes, all skunks, skunks, all gathered around the man whom God had chosen to keep them safe, which would probably be Noah. So I'm not really showing the pictures, but here's that. Let me just move a little. When the time came, God said to Noah, Go into the ark and take all the animals with you. I'm sending the rain for 40 days and 40 nights. This rain will flood the earth, wiping it clean. So Noah stepped into the ark with his family. With them came the pairs of animals by two. Two by two. The day, the day that they entered the boat, the floods came just as God said. The skies opened up with huge pounding raindrops, fell to the ground, lakes and rivers and oceans burst open, water spilled into the land, Noah's ark began to float. His family and all the animals were safe inside the ark. For 40 days the rain fell, and the water continued to rise. The water rose higher and higher until Noah's ark floated above the highest mountains on the earth. For months and months, waves crashed over the earth. And for months and months, Noah and his family and all the animals safely walked on the waves. Almost done. Then God looked down at the ark and everyone inside. He knew that it had been in there with all the sounds and smells of animals for too long. Long time. So God decided it was time for the flood to be over. He sent a strong howling wind across the earth and the rain stopped. The water went down, down, down until finally the ark began to rest on top of a mountain. The mountain top was surrounded by water. So Noah decided to send a bird to fly over the water. If the bird returned to him, Noah would know that there was no grass or no trees for the bird to land on. So Noah opened the window of the ark and sent out a dove, but the dove found no place to rest. It soon returned to the ark. After seven more days, Noah sent out the dove again. This time, the dove came back with the olive leaf in its beak. When Noah saw the leaf, he knew it that the water had gone down. He knew that trees and plants had begun to grow again on land. Noah was overjoyed. Now that the earth was dry, God spoke to Noah. He said, Noah, it is time to leave the ark. Bring out all the animals, the blue jays and black birds, hyenas and hippos, the toads and the turtles too. 
Then he went out into the world of multiply and fill the earth again. Noah did everything that God told him to do. When everyone was done on dry land again, Noah's, Noah thanked God. Noah thanked God for keeping him and his family and all of the animals safe. God blessed Noah's family. He told them, be fruitful, fill the earth with good people again. Then God made a promise. Never again will I send out a flood all over the earth. With these words, God put a rainbow in the sky. The bright colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, curved above the clouds. It was a glistening reminder of God's promise to the world. Every time Noah and his family saw the rainbow in the clouds, they remembered God promise, God's promise. And they remembered how God had kept them safe during the big flood. So, that was just mainly about how if you listen to God, he will keep you safe and tell you what to do. And um, he will definitely always keep a promise. And, yeah, I'm just going to be right back. Tuesday, but I'll post like, I don't know, I haven't been posting in a long time, but, so, God will always keep a promise, unless, unless, no. I always keep a promise because he's God. He kept Noah safe. And then the part that really stuck out to me was... It was all sentence. Then God made a promise. Never again will. Send I send a flood all over all the earth. With these words, God put a rainbow in the sky. school to school I'm going to be needing to get to bed soon so yeah but I get out of school on Wednesdays half day so I'll like film whenever I get home but next is for the Bible I have a tiny one doesn't matter what size it is great chapter two is a long one No, not a long one. It is that, that,
that bad. So, it's not long. I recommend the Bible.is app. You can follow along, listen to it, whatever you want to do. Um, if you sign up, you can highlight it, get a video of it, anything like that. So, I'm just going to start. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come yet. That means like, like, it, he hasn't come to refill, like, the glass. So, the glass represents his blood. And his blood is basically not, like, sin. It's, like, how he washed away the sin for us. How he died on the cross for us. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone Water jar, water jars. They were for the Jewish rites of the purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, "Fill the jars with water," and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, "Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast." So they took it. Whenever the master of the feast tasted the wa water. Now he became, he become, now become one. The water now become one. And did not know where it came from there. The servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bride's groom. Bride and groom. And said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and when People have drunk freely, then pour wine. When you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did not, did at Cana in Galilee, and manifest his glory. And the disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum Nanium with his mother and his brothers and his disciples and they stayed there for a few days. The Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went to Jerusalem in the temple. He found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the monkey changers sitting in there and making a whip of cords he drove them all out of the temple with sheep and oxen and then he poured out the coins of money changers and overturned their tables and he told them who sold the pi pigeons take these things away do not make my father's house into of trade his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal, your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and Will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Then, when therefore he was raised from the dead, he, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Now he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, Many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did, and did not 
did not entrust him to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about a man for he himself knew what was in man. So that chapter was super good. I like that one a bunch. So that was John 2. The main part that stuck out to me was, And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come yet. So, yeah. So, basically what it's saying is his hour has it came yet so he filled with water wine So, like, that just means his hour hasn't came yet, so he filled water, and it became wine. So, now, he, like, so, like, he's just basically saying, like, I can't tell if my hair looks okay because I think I'm going to do hair this close. But, so now he's just like saying that like he has like, he has to wait for his time to come. Um, and once his time comes, he'll do that, like do that for us. So, that's it for that one. So now I'm going to do some orange. So that was Tuesday, no, this is t tomorrow's Tuesday, the 19th, we get out on the 20th, Yee. so we have a half day, I think I already said that, hold on, my phone fell, no, I don't know. I fell out. I fell out. A gratitude. And then cleaner. So first for my gratitude. Is. Monday. The worst day of the week. Well there's not a worst day of the week. It's just. Um. I guess a hard day of the week, you could say. So this is my galaxy journal. Um, the mood my mood for the day was a nine. I'm fortunate. Fortunate means lucky. I'm lucky because I have a family who loves me. I am grateful for the Bible, God, and Jesus. I'll choose kindness by giving. Highlight of my day was probably Miss Archie's class. So, 
after the I was not calling out names, trust me. Miss Ramonica's class. Miss Ursley class. She let us talk. Something I'm looking forward to tomorrow. We have like science test tomorrow and I'm not ready for it, so yippee. And we don't have any homework this week, so that's a good thing. I'm done with this. Now it's time for my planner just to like plan out some stuff that I do December. So Um, clean room, did not do that. Doing one, haven't did that yet. Um, have not did that yet. Did not do that. So, the only thing I did is a YouTube video, which I'm doing right now. So, that's kind of bad. But, Tuesday, chill. That's about it. Oh, clean. Um, like, that's the most important thing I really need to do. But, that's it for my journaling, y'all. And, um, so. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video i'll try to post this by tomorrow but i'm gonna have to do a lot of editing so bye i love y'all